Welcome back everyone and today I will be unboxing my first ever Azone doll. This is America from Hitalia the World Twinkle. He is 1-6 scale from the Asterisk collection number 8. He arrived not too long ago and I'm very excited to open him so let's get started. He does not have any tape that I can see however I'm still gonna try and be careful with him. Like in the previous review, let's take a, sh a short, quick look at the box. It's very nice. I really like the color and style they chose to go for it. It's very worldwide, which makes sense because the series revolves around personified countries. And we have America. A very stylish blue with um, decorative framing around pictures of the doll itself, posed to perfection. His name is all over the box, as well as the name of the series and Azone's logo. Inside the box, there's actually a really cool printed backdrop showcasing a map of the world. I thought that was a really cool detail and it is removable, I checked, so you can use that as your own little backdrop whenever you want to photograph him. Other than that, it's a very standard box with information on the character on the back and on the sides. The blister's kind of flimsy, honestly, but it's not a big deal. Now here is America. He does have some tape on the sides. But that's pretty much it as far as protection other than this blister. All right, let's take him out. And it looks like there's some stuff taped to the back. Before I move on to the doll, just let me show y'all what it comes with. So it came with this, I'm assuming this to be a set of instructions. I remember getting something like this when I owned um, a Sebastian Michaelis raw or raw action, um, real action figure. And it just tells you how to put on separate parts. In this case, it's his glasses, which are just these um, metal frames. So that's useful. And then it comes with this bag full of his extra hands. So here are his extra hands. He comes with a lot of them, so I'm not going to show them all because they're all kind of jumbled up. Um, but he has some standard hands, holding hands, his thumbs up because he is a character who likes to throw those hand signals. He is American. The two thumbs up, um, fist hands. That looks like a holding hand, just a standard spread out. Uh, I guess just an action hand and another holding hand. You can see the hole. Uh, this one just looks like a regular fist, a more action-y holding hand, I believe. And then there is this one. I'm not really sure what that's supposed to be, but it adds to some customization to him so he can look at more animated as you pose him since he is just a doll. Now let's move on to America himself. I will zoom in so that I can get some better shots. First of all, um, his jacket is made of faux leather. I can feel the smoothness of it. There's something on his head um, to keep his hair in place. The thing about he these dolls is that you do have to style them yourself so I can already tell I'm going to have to do some cutting of his hair. It is too long to fit the character properly. Here is what many people, or what I think the official name of it is an ahoge. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but it's basically just a flock of hair um, that just stays upward no matter what. Um, they did a pretty good job on replicating that. Thankfully, I won't have to do that myself. Um, but other than that, I feel like they did a pretty good job. Um, styling it to where the customer won't have to style it that much. It, um, from the front it already looks fine, it's just the back that his hair is too long for me. Moving on, his outfit is so cute and very accurate to the character. We have his little airplane on his right sleeve as well as the star on his um, breast of the jacket. It's really quite astonishing that they put so much detail into his doll. Um, all of this is separate layers, so if I took off the belt and this top mil military vest, I feel like there would be a shirt under there. Moving on, 
the pockets I don't think open, but it's a nice detail. And then his shoes are just solid black, which is what they are in the series. And the rest of his outfit is just this kind of rougher fabric material. And then he has a tie. <laughs> his face is also very cute. I like how they really added all the detail of his eyes and just a little bit of blush. His hair is super soft and that's pretty much it. I mean, he's really cute. And let's see how he articulates. This was a pretty expensive doll, so I'm not going to stretch him out that much, but it looks like he can almost do the back kick. I don't know if that's because his pants are preventing him from doing the all the way, but he cannot do the forward kick that well. I think that's because of the pants. His arm can go around a little bit. His hand cannot do much, just twist side to side slightly. Um, his arm can bend pretty far, that's good. His head, I'm gonna try and be super careful. It feels really soft and hollow, so like a Barbie. And it looks like it's like a Barbie in the sense that you can twist it all the way around. Um, I don't think his waist has any movement. So it looks like he does have the um, articulation of more or less a typical Barbie. His head can move, his arms and elbows can move, his legs and knees can move, but everything else is pretty much stiff. And his legs can move. That's the only difference. So that's pretty good. Oh, popped it off. First of all, this doll is adorable. Azo went the extra mile with his jacket, which has stitching, clear detail of its creation and the symbols needed to make it relate to the character. The faux leather material feels smooth and good quality, while the uniform underneath looks amazingly authentic. Its material is of a rougher fabric, which complements well with the shiny material of the jacket. All of his outfit has the details needed, down to his belt and pockets. One thing to note is that his hands, unlike other dolls, are painted black to mimic gloves because the character tends to wear gloves a lot in the series. A lot of people didn't like this, but I don't really mind it. It's not that big of a deal for me. Although I do kind of wish that he came with at least one extra pair of hands that didn't have the gloves on it, just to add a little more possibility into posing. Moving on to his face, it's adorable. Azon mimicked the creator's eye style perfectly and the overall shape works really well with it. It does look a little big compared to the body's proportions, but that could just be me and the style of the series of dolls. One criticism I do have though is that his hair color is different than what I was expecting. During promo pictures and even on the box, he has an orange undertone that matches well to the creator's original artwork, but the doll itself has really, really yellow hair. It's not that big of a deal, but something I noticed. Otherwise, his hair feels really great quality and soft. Well, on the topic of criticisms, however, I do have two others. The first is with his glasses. I do worry about his face getting scratched up, seeing as they're just flat pieces of metal that you stick on. The doll doesn't have any slots to place them in. You kind of just have to balance them on his face until they stay or bend the frames away that tightens their hold, which could scratch him. And I'm really worried about that. The second is that he doesn't come with a stand. I'm someone who thinks doll stands should always be included, but not many companies follow that notion. I had to use a Monster High doll to stand him up, and I wish he came with his own, even if it was just a cheap plastic one. In the end, it's not that big of a deal, though. Other than those two things, I don't really have much else to say about the doll. It's really cute and detailed. Right out of the box, he looks like the character he's modeled after. And speaking as a fan of the series and character, I personally love it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see y'all in my next video.